Hey guys, Godcubing here. Welcome to my EOLR tutorial. Today we're going to be going over the 1 1 case. There are three different ways that we're going to be going setting up to the arrow case for this. The first way is we're going to be slicing in the same direction, uh, single slice moves with a U move in between. We have to make sure though that our first slice move is in a direction so that the bad edges remain in their respective layers. So this is in the U layer. After we slice, it's still in the U layer. Then we do a U move and continue that same slice direction. There's another way, which is an M2 way from that. And you can think M2 plus M is equal to an M prime. So it's an M2 way. And we also, we will finish it with an M like we did the first time. The best way to think of this intuitively is that we are swapping the bad edges into their opposite layers, doing a U move, and then swapping them back. So instead of keeping them in the layer and continuing, we're swapping their layers, doing a U move, and bring it back. The final way that we set up to the arrow case is with our U layer bad edge on the side, and we insert it into the D layer good edge position. So here. We're going to do that like this. And that also gives us an arrow case. Those are the three different ways that we're going to be setting up to good arrows to solve EOLR. In this first section, both of the LR edges are bad edges. There's only one case in this group, and it's very easy because as long as you use either, as long as you use the not insert method, you'll get a good arrow. So that was the insert method. Obviously, I didn't. With this one, the same direction, it works. With the opposite direction, it also works. So that's how you set up to a good error for this case, quite easy. In this group, we're gonna be dealing with one EOLR edge that's a bad edge and one that's a good edge. I have subdivided this into three different groups. Uh, this is gonna be the stacked part where the LR edges are stacked. Then we'll go on to the uh, opposite, same layer, and then we'll move on to adjacent. For these ones, it's quite easy. All you have to do is do either of the non-insert ones. So the slice direction ones. Um, the one that you do depends heavily on where these are. So if they're on the front, I'm gonna do my slice in the direction to put them in the D layer. And since that was keeping this bad edge in the top layer, that means I'm slicing in the same direction and that'll give me a good error. With our other one over here, we have a misoriented edge over an oriented edge, and we bring them into the bottom layer, and that brings the bad edge in the top layer to the D layer, and so we slice in the opposite direction with our second slice, and that also gives us a good error. In this group, our LR edges, one is bad and one is good, and they're both opposite. For this one, they're in the top layer, and for this one, they're in the bottom layer. The way that we're gonna solve these is uh, dependent on where they are. So in the top layer, we're gonna be using the opposite direction slice setup because that keeps both of our edges in the top layer. And sadly, for both of these cases, uh, we can only set up the mediocre arrow at best. So we would do that set up into mediocre, which would set up into the one move arrow, like so. With this one, they're in the D layer, so we need to move them to the top layer, and so we slice in the same direction to get them both into the top layer. Otherwise, they would never, only one of them would reach the top layer. And here we have the mediocre, and we solve from there, and we have a cancellation. With this final group of the half and half set, we have them adjacent. Here they're an M2 way and here they're obviously adjacent. With both of these cases, we're gonna be flipping both edges. Since these ones are both in the top layer, it's quite easy to see that we're gonna flip this one. With our first slice, do a U move and continue that slice to flip the second one. So in this case, we're flipping one, replacing it and flipping the other. That's a very intuitive way to think of it, and then you'd continue from there with your good arrow. With this next one, we have them adjacent, like so. And for this one, we're gonna be slicing in opposite directions, and we're gonna first flip U, 
and then move you to the back so that when we slice back, this becomes a side edge. So, same thing. Slicing, flipping this one, doing the U moves that we can flip this one. Just make sure you're trying to keep it in the top layer because if it goes down here, that's not a good error. This last set is based off the fact that both LR edges are good edges. Um, I also subdivided this into opposites and adjacents. For this one, they're opposite on the M slice, and for this one, they're opposite in the U layer. For both of these, the approach is similar. We're going to use that insert approach every time for, for both of these to get us the good arrow. For the other one, exact same thing. They're opposite on the M slice, one here, one here. And we're just going to do that insert, which will give us a mediocre. But sadly, that's the best we can do with this one, so... With this final one, our LR edges are adjacent. Here they're adjacent in two different layers. For these ones, we're gonna be flipping one and preserving the other. The problem is, is that it's very difficult to do that. The way we're gonna be preserving this is we're gonna preserve it into the D layer, and then we're gonna flip this one while continuing it to the D layer. So now it is preserved, though it seems like we're moving it. We are, but it stays a good edge, and this becomes a side edge. So just remember that when they're adjacent, that you do the first one, where you go in the same direction, and that you have to keep this in the top layer with your second slice. With this one, it's exactly an M2 away, which is what I've been doing with basically all these cases. Um, here, we're gonna be, instead of doing an M2 setup to that, we're just going to do our other one, which is an M2 way, where we bring this here, and then flip this, and bring that one back, like so. It's pretty intuitive. A lot of these are just an M2 way, so it makes it a lot easier to learn. Even though there are 11 distinct cases, there is in fact only seven. If you don't want to miss my next video on the 6 flip case, then subscribe. Also, I'm open to any suggestions on how you solve that. Leave your suggestions in the comments below. As always, is if this helped you, then leave a like so more people can see it. And as always, if you think I missed something, leave a comment down below telling me what I missed. Bye!